Given that the word remastered is in the title, you'd be forgiven for assuming that Dark Souls Remastered was a Titan experience with most of its bugs ironed out. But no, in fact, not at all. Dark Souls Remastered really isn't much more than a port of the original game's 1.09 patch from 2013, with new lighting and a higher frame rate cap. But that's just fine by me. The remastered version also unified the game across all platforms, and created a single version with which to refer to it. So in this video, I'm only going to be covering glitches that can still be executed today in the current version of DSR, and can be done on all platforms. I'm also going to skip over any out-of-bounds glitches, because multiple have been discovered for every area in the game at this point, and if I included them all, this video would never end. So, if that works for you, let's break this game. Let's start out with what is possibly the most well-known glitch in Dark Souls 1, Sin Skip. Likely the oldest glitch on this list, and one of the most useful since it gives you access to Sin's fortress without opening the gate or ringing either bell. In order to do this, we need to trick the game into thinking we're falling to activate what's known as Death Cam. To do that, lure one of the hollow soldiers down the stairs that lead to Andre, parry its attack, and follow through with the critical. This may take a few tries, so I'd recommend barehanding until you get it. If done correctly, the critical animation should clip your character into the stairs just enough to flip the camera overhead, and now, since the game thinks you're dying, it will stop loading new areas. From here, it's only a matter of walking into the entrance of Sins, and when you think you've got it, quit and reload to get back in control of the camera. Just like that, you're now inside a closed Sins Fortress, and you're now free to complete the area as normal. Just don't die before reaching the bonfire at the top, or you'll have to do this all over again. So now let's say you've made it all the way through Sin's Fortress and beat the Iron Golem at the top all on your own with no help from anyone else, and now you're in an Orlando. You got through the Painting Guardians, parried the Silver Knight Archer, and made it to the bonfire. Ready to challenge Ornstein and Smoke, two of the most overrated... In the room just before their boss arena, take out the two giants and then aggro the Silver Knight. Lure him to the fog gate and parry him while being as close to the fog as possible. If done right, the critical animation should push your character inside the fog just enough to trigger the cutscene while you remain outside of the arena. ONS will now be aggressive since they think you've started the fight, and from here, you can try to cheese them through the fog gate, but the exploit doesn't end here. Instead, go back and rest at the bonfire to reset their AI, but not remove the boss health bar from the bottom of the screen. The game actually still thinks you're inside the boss arena, despite resting at a bonfire. So now when you pass through the fog as normal, neither Ornstein nor Smoke will move at all. Since this fight has a second phase, you can't actually win this way, unfortunately. In fact, if you kill Ornstein first, the second phase will start with Smoke being aggressive just as normal, and if you kill Smoke first, Ornstein's second phase will just... never start. However, there is another glitch we can do with this boss fight. If you manage to finish the first phase normally, and spawn Super Ornstein, there's an easy way to take him out provided you have a bit of health. First, lure him to the corner of the arena where the biggest elevator is, and stand next to the large glass window. You want to bait Ornstein's grab attack, but have it hit you as close to the wall as possible. You'll know you've done it when your character pops onto the other side of the wall briefly. Ornstein actually takes a step forward after throwing you back to the ground, and this is enough to make him pass through the wall and fall to his death. Just. Be patient, it's a long way down. The same exact thing can be done to the centipede demon as well. After passing through the fog gate, immediately take a left and stand as close to the corner as possible. Put up your shield and make sure you have plenty of stamina or a shield with high stability to resist its heavy hits. Same deal, get grabbed and when centipede throws you back down, he should clip through the wall and fall to his death. And don't worry, you'll still get the orange charred ring, that was patched to go straight in your inventory from an update all the way back in 2011. And speaking of falling to your death, have you ever considered the possibility of just not taking fall damage? This is a remaster exclusive glitch that allows you to roll while falling, and if timed correctly, it's possible to use the iframes from the roll to nullify fall damage even when the fall would be lethal. For whatever reason, it only works if your character is between 25% and 30% of your maximum equip load. This range can be calculated by multiplying your current maximum equip load stat by 0.25 to get the low end, and by 0.3 to get the high end. As long as your current character weight is within the range of these two numbers, this should work. 
once you're within that precious 5% threshold, roll off a ledge and continuously mash the dodge button to keep rolling until you hit the floor. You're still bound by stamina requirements while in this state, so make sure you have a high enough endurance level to span the fall you're trying to make, and that the timing is such that you land in the middle of a roll. Some areas with long falls may initiate the top-down death cam, which supersedes the iframes of the roll, meaning you'll still die when you hit the ground. But if you cast fall control before you take the plunge, even these long distances can be survived. For example, here's me skipping the entirety of Upper Blight Town in about 10 seconds. The possibilities for this glitch are endless, but it does require the game to run at 60 FPS, so as of right now, Sorry Switch version, this one isn't for you. Here's one that's been around since the Japanese release of Demon Souls. Spell swapping allows you to combine the effects of spells, most notably, to allow you to enchant non-enchantable weapons like bows, crossbows, and magical items. In the original release of Dark Souls, this could be done during a roll, but that's been patched out for some time now. The new setup requires a short fall, like from a low ledge or a staircase. First you need two spells that you can cast, the first being the buff, and the second being something generic. With the non-enchantable weapon in the offhand slot, you need to fail to cast the buff, walk off the ledge, press right on the d-pad to switch to the weapon, and press up on the d-pad to switch to the generic spell, and then, when you hit the ground, attempt to cast once again. If it goes off, you should see the animation of the generic spell, but the effects of the buff applied to the weapon. This glitch can allow you to add even more magical damage to purely magical weapons like the Moonlight Greatsword, for example. And I know this doesn't seem too excessive, but remember, that's all pure magic damage. Actually, hold on. Let's add the Dragon Torso Stone, Red Tear Stone Ring, Hornet Ring, and Power Within. Okay, that's better. And still pure magic damage. In a more practical use case, this glitch can allow you to make a legitimately viable crossbow build especially if you decide to go with Sunlight Blade on a Lightning Avalon, since all three bolts will get the bonus damage of Sunlight Blade independently. If you decide to go that route, make sure you have plenty of Lightning Bolts on hand, since this weapon burns through them. You can buy Lightning Bolts from the Giant Blacksmith in Orlando, and luckily they aren't too... Alright, let's dupe some souls. This is the newest glitch on the list, and one of the trickier ones until you get the hang of it. It abuses the Specify Quantity prompt from using a soul item in the remaster, so it can't be done on the original Dark Souls release. The first thing you need to do is go to a merchant that sells ammo and select Purchase on an item that you can hold 999 of. You don't actually have to buy any, but you do need to see the prompt of 999 on your screen. Then back out and open the inventory. Move a soul item to the top of the menu. Then switch to the System menu and highlight the Brightness option. Here comes the hard part. You need to press confirm, that's X for me on PlayStation, and then immediately press R so that the brightness menu opens on top of the inventory menu. It will likely take a couple tries to get it right, but when it works, you'll see two layers of text on the top of the screen and be able to see item icons in the background. Now press confirm again to open the submenu for the sole item you moved to the top, but you won't be able to see this because the brightness menu is covering it up. Finally, you need to have both Use on the Hidden Item menu selected and Defaults on the Brightness menu selected at the same time. And to do that, you want to press diagonally down right or down left on the D-pad. If you just press down and then right, it will select Drop instead of Use on the Hidden Item menu, and this glitch won't work. You'll know you've gotten it when you manage to select the word Defaults and can still see the dark orange rectangle lightly in the background. That's the Hidden menu still highlighting the word Use. Press and confirm here will open the Specify Quantity menu. The game will default to the quantity of the last item we inspected, which was 999 arrows. So select the maximum and confirm to pop your soul 999 times. You'll lose the original soul item at this point, so you will have to go find another soul if you want to do more. Buying 999 wooden arrows might be a smart purchase at this point. That way you can use your own inventory to set up the glitch in the future and will no longer be tied to a merchant. And yes, the same trick can be done to duplicate humanity as well. Just be prepared for the fact that all of your humanity will become soft in the process. It's been known since the original Dark Souls release that if you force close the game or unplug your system at a precise time while the game is loading a new area, you can load back in at an incorrect location. 
but I chose not to include this because suddenly cutting the power to a drive while it's reading and writing always has the potential to corrupt data, and it's just not a method I'd advocate for. But this glitch now has an alternate setup that doesn't require the game to be reset at all. You're going to need the Estus Flask, a Homeward Bone or Dark Sign, and the Purple Coward's Crystal, which is obtained from the Battle of Stoicism Gazebo immediately to the right of Artorius' boss arena in Ulasil. This glitch works by initiating two warps at the same time, and the way this is executed is pretty much exactly the same as spell swapping. First, put the Purple Crystal, Estus Flask, and then either a Homeward Bone or Dark Sign in your hotbar in that order. Then go to a small ledge and use the purple crystal to make your character shrug, and then immediately walk off the ledge, toggle your right hand weapon, switch to the Estus Flask, and use it. When this glitch goes off, it should force the effects of the purple crystal onto the Estus Flask animation, and you should get a prompt letting you know that you're being teleported out of the gazebo. Now, very quickly, switch to your Homeward Bone or Dark Sign and warp back to your last bonfire, before the purple crystal can take you away. This will add the coordinates of the gazebo on top of the coordinates of your last bonfire. And if the last bonfire you used was the Lord Vessel, this is enough to push you inside of the kiln even if the door is still closed. Just note that the purple crystal does check to see that you are in Ulasil when you use it, even for this glitch, so you'll have to perform the item swap somewhere within the DLC, regardless of the last bonfire you rested at. Here's a chart that lists all of the potential outcomes, and as you can see, this is a very versatile glitch. So if you're already planning to kill Artorias, pick up a purple crystal while you're there. Looks like this thing might be pretty useful after all. That's all for now. I'm aware that there have been many more glitches discovered in this game than just these highlights. Throw a comment down below if you have a cool glitch story, or want to share one that I didn't include. Hope this video has been a pleasure. Thanks for watching.